everyone thank you for coming on this channel again and this is the chat with Della I'm Della your host for the show and so today we'll be talking about something really important again which is sexual abuse now sexual abuse on every point every area children youths girls boys everything and today we have in us with us in the studio someone who is of high honors someone who has done something really great and her contribution to society when it comes to sexual abuse is applaudable. I want her to introduce herself. Hello everyone, my name is Ayala Ifekeride and um, I'm the convener of Loud Whispers Foundation. Now what we do basically at Loud Whispers Foundation is we sensitize the society as regards sexual abuse relating to children specifically. We organize programs um, within different states in Nigeria. So far we've organized within Oyo and Ocean State, that is the city of Ileife and the city of Ibadan. What we do is we, um, talk, we talk to children, we talk to adults, we talk to young adults, mothers, basically everybody in the society has a role to play in curbing the menace that is child sexual abuse. Okay, thank you very much Ife on that. So the first time I heard about Loud Whispers um, Association, foundation. sorry foundation, um, I kind of like had to come down and look at the name Loud Whispers. Can you like tell us what brought about the name? Because I have my own idea in my head, like Loud loud Whispers, you are whispering and it's loud. So I want us to tell us what brought about the name. All right, okay. Um, well, the name, the name came about um, just looking at the old picture of child sexual abuse. Because child sexual abuse is something that I've come to realize that a lot of us have experienced at some point mm -hmm. in our lives. Yeah. Although in some cases worse than others, but it's something that most people have experienced. And then it's something that eats so deep. Mm -hmm. Like it's something that it's um it's um like the effect is like okay. much, it's really, yeah. really much. But then we live in a society where um we are known to, you know, blame the victims yeah. well. so most people don't really like to talk about child sexual abuse yeah. such that it is a very loud thing yeah. it's a very deep thing but because of the fact that the society we are in doesn't it shuts them off exactly so, yeah. so it's like a Wow. Loud, okay. Just... So it's according to the something that happens all the time is really rampant but at the end of the day these people I won't call them victims because like many times we place them as victims we try to put a tag on them so these people are tended to have this pushed down mentality that the society does not want to hear their, their voice and which brings about the whispers in front of it so loud whispers foundation thank you for once again so my first question to you what a lot of people have different ideas about sexual abuse okay. what do you think some people feel like it's just um, rape some people feel like it has to do with sexual assault some people have different ideologies about it so I want you to help us break this down what exactly is sexual abuse well sexual abuse is any form of sexual violation oh, wow. done to you know a person and it's only a violation because of the lack of consent mm -hmm. you, you don't consent to that sexual relation wow. so it could be okay. it doesn't necessarily have to be rape rape is just one of it, it one could just be inappropriate touching it could be I mean so diverse wow okay so it's just it's a violation without your consent anything done without your consent that has to do with sexuality is sexual abuse so if someone just touches me anyhow exactly it's sexual right. abuse and does it have to be someone of the opposite sex well we live we live in a woke generation where before if you probably say you know but then this generation we live in we actually have same sex people who mm -hmm. actually have you know sexual attractions to you mm -hmm. so them touching you could actually be born out of okay so sexual, sexual, abuse. Still sexual abuse so there's a lot of, there's a lot of generalization when it comes to sexual abuse now i want you to, since you deal with children um ch child sexual abuse i want you to help us understand when a child is sexually abused what comes up from the adults that abuses this child or what do they what is actually their intention like sometimes it's just that they find pleasure in it or they they i don't know are they sick or is there something like is there something you feel causes all this what exactly is the issue well uh, well um this is my own opinion, but then people really try to advocate that you shouldn't give the perpetrators a reason to mm -hmm. actually sexually abuse someone. That there's no reason under the sun that is justifiable enough. Yeah, to, to sexually say abuse you someone. Can sexually yeah. abuse someone, like okay. I mean, even a child. Mm -hmm. But then um, I feel 
you know many of us have although this is a myth so i don't want to generalize but they usually say that most people who have experienced a form of um sexual abuse when they are kids then they grow up that means they de- um, they develop um sexual pleasure, pleasure at yeah. a very early age yeah. so if they don't have many of them just bottle it in mm. girls might still talk but you know guys for I yeah, you want I'm, to be a man. <laughs> yeah, so many of them might bottle it in such that it reaches a stage where they are like approaching puberty and then their hormones are all over the place. Okay. And it is just for the perpetrator, for the perpetrator, it is easier for the person to look for a vulnerable, mm-hmm. susceptible person yeah. to, you know, sexually abuse. And most times it's children. They are okay. easy targets. Yeah, that's Very true, easy true. targets. To rape an adult, the adults might still, you know, fight back yeah. and all. But for a child, especially a timid child, and in this um, society where we don't even, you know, give our children yeah, sex no talk at an early age, mm-hmm. such that you are able to entice the child with something through threats and all stuff. So it's just, it's really easy when it comes to child sexual yeah, abuse. Yeah. To, okay, thank you very much, Ife. So um, having that said, I want you to put us through. A lot of people actually want to make sure that they are, they are contributing something to the society when it has to do with sexual abuse. But they cannot come out to say it because a lot of people say they are angry with something that has happened to them while they were young. And they say that a lot of people advocate for things, advocate for it because that they probably had an experience or they've actually had something to do with the issue at hand. Yeah. So I want you to give us a light on how can we contribute to the society yeah. when it comes to sexual abuse. How do we help the society when it comes to sexual abuse without having that intention or sorry, without having that mindset that when we are coming out we have to see our story yeah. and all that. And even while we have to see our story, yeah. is there something that is beneficial to the society in seeing our story? Yeah. Do you think we should we should hold on to our story or tell our story? Um, without emotionally ba- blackmailing people, can you? All right. Okay. Um. Well, um. I think the controversy with people that have been coming up, celebrities, who have been, because they have a platform, so they've been coming up to share their sexual abuse stories. Mm-hmm. Then people term it as, you know, sexual abuse have become a trend, mm-hmm. such that they try to diminish the whole the, idea yeah. behind it. But the thing about sexual abuse is, it's really deep. So you have to reach a form of a certain level of comfortability mm. to be able to share your story to okay. a very public audience but then when you get the courage to share your story automatically it's going to trigger something in every other person that's yeah, this person can talk, talk yeah. i can talk and then i don't feel um sexual abuse you coming out to advocate for sexual abuse or to you know impact the society on how to do with sexual mm-hmm. abuse it's something that should be regarded as you know maybe a, a fake thing or just clout like they call it yeah. now like it means to clout or something no it shouldn't it shouldn't be regarded as that because i i mentioned something earlier that a lot of people have gone through sexual abuse a lot mm, a lot a lot, a lot, actually, lot. so actually. it's something that deals as dealt huge blows on the society in a very large to a very large extent mm. so if we don't actually do anything about it it's only going to get worse mm. it's only going mm. to get worse so that's, i don't think if right. you personally experience sexual abuse and you feel the need to advocate for it, it's fine and if you've personally experienced sexual abuse and you don't even want to advocate for it and you think fine but i feel everybody should just learn to respect yeah, people's decisions, decisions as regards oh that's nice okay so i realized that out of nine out of ten girls go to sexual abuse because it, it, there was a time when a lot of things were happening pertaining to sexual abuse and i took my research and I, and asking people i realized that at one point or the other people have gone through sexual abuse guys girls it's so bad that you see a guy talk about it and then everybody's looking at him like what like you were also abused but the truth is that it happens to both sex so i want to hear your your opinion what do you think about guys who are probably going through it and don't want to talk about it or they feel like it's not manly enough to have gone through sexual abuse anything like that like i want you to shed more light on that all right sexual abuse in relation to guys still boils down to you know social constructs Mm -hmm. societal standards and all because they've made guys i mean i have a couple of friends who have experienced child sexual abuse now it's not that they just walked up to me and started sharing their stories with me but because i'm vocal about child sexual abuse you know and we just get to convert on that deep level so i've come to realize that even boys experience sexual Sexual abuse. abuse but for them I guess based on, you know, the society, like you said, if a guy should come out and say you've been sexually abused, the way they will look at, like, guy, alpha, but then it is still 
deep it is still absolutely wrong boy or girl no matter who has experienced this child i mean you are at the age where it is even impossible to give consent to mm, sexual yeah, activities yeah. so it is wrong no matter what while some guys you know might just make it seem as i mean i've been this virgin since i was seven or mm. something it's actually it's, it's not it's cool. not a good thing it's not yeah, cool. it's, it's not wrong it's wrong so it happens to the same way it happens to ladies it happens to wow okay so um also i want to ask um for people out there who actually want to make this happen they want to tell people about it they want to advocate against sexual abuse they want to make sure that people who have gone through these things have a way out emotionally physically psychologically anyhow how do you think they can help others how do you think they can come out does everyone have to have a foundation or a movement or what do you think exactly that they could do well no no i mean it, it could start from it could start from your younger ones it could start okay. from you know the kids in church or something if you just feel you know sexual, you've been sexually abused at one point and then you feel that you know this thing is wrong i mean the effect it had on me i won't like it to happen to you know another child yeah. and then you look out for the child and then you you know sort of mentor the child sort of give the child advice it's, it's that's what i mean it doesn't necessarily have to be on a very large scale oh, wow. if it's that fine i mean because okay. you get to reach a yeah, larger audience yeah. but something on a more personal level, level. it even sure. gives you the opportunity to, you to know, meet more to, people yeah. oh that's good okay so um um the next question for you is what are the um steps that you think a parent or an adult who has noticed some movements or patterns mm -hmm. pertaining to a child mm -hmm can do when like you know that this person is probably going to get sexually abused by these adults with the way they are moving mm -hmm. what do you think because like there was a time yeah i like to say this funny story there was a time my mom called and she said someone in the church called her and told her that my sisters and i were too close to my dad that she watch us and to me it felt like <laughs> excuse me like i'm close to my dad like we're all close to my dad like okay. if you see us we're only girls and okay. so we're close so she made that comment and for me it sounded so weird okay. but again I, I looked at it and i felt like this is someone who has just been concerned uh. but the way she called my mom sounded so weird okay. like what do you think of us and that kind of thing okay. so what do you think an adult such adults can do or even if it's a child who notices such thing uh. with an adult how do you think um, what, what are the steps one um, that such, such people could take to okay, okay. well if an adult notices something like that i mean that's why yeah. you're an adult intervene prevent something like that and it starts with basic skills basic life skills that you imbibe in your child now a lot of this first foundation we actually use a manual to okay. teach to pass our messages across so i'm just going to share some tips that okay, we yeah. well first off um we try to work on you know every parent should have a duty to work on your child's self-esteem mm. either parent either guardian either um older sister older brother just try to work on the self-esteem of kids you know try to make them know you know you are beautiful you are this just to mm. make sure that they are vocal just to make mm. sure that they, that they have, have an the opinion you have strong yeah. opinions about things because perpetrators are less likely to you know hinge on their, to, yeah, yeah to hinge on you know a very bold child but then when it's a soft timid child who probably has, is so naive and something is they are just very easy to like and also um the parents could actually let the child know we live in a society where um one uncle maybe when you're living in the same compound can tell your mommy that ah, mommy eh, if a man rude gone if you can shake it and then the child just beat the fear and tell her ah, See uncle, can you come back by so cool? Damn on look, come up with a co such that you've made the child know that anything, just say yes, yeah, yes, as long yeah. as the person is an adult. Yeah. But in most cases it might be misleading. Because mm. if that adult knows that okay, your mom has told you, obey me, obey me. Because the child will just feel like, okay, oh, my mom said anything, I should obey, yeah. oh, I'm obeying. But then when you let your child know mm. that you actually have an opinion, you can say no for something you do like no means no. Yeah. No means no. I guess means yes. yes but then right. if you don't and then you should also let your child know you know not to get too familiar like mm. certain relationships where you let your child go to one uncle's house or go to one and just stay there right, stay there right, stay there true. stay there and when your child comes back and actually what even happens is after sexual abuse there are actually changes in the child mm. most times the child becomes say more withdrawn let's say an introvert yes, child true. becomes an That's extrovert true. child becomes an they find it harder to talk yeah mm. and becomes more withdrawn but then parents we can you know instead for us to take note of these signs and actually ask questions we might just neglect that but yeah how come we need to take care but yeah how come we need to take care but yeah take care but yeah and be sensitive steps, and be sensitive right. and also we talk about this um good stranger bad stranger while it might be debatable but we feel 
good stranger bad stranger for example if you're about to be sexually abused in a place where you know that you know maybe um there's one woman selling food or someone that you can just easily run to and just talk to you know you just get to recognize good stranger bad Bad stranger stranger. let's say you're for a female now let's say your auntie in school your school aunt you just let your auntie know that or if it's your sunday school teacher for um, muslims if it's their imams if it's their kill teachers and all just talk yeah, yeah that's true okay so there are a lot of myths about children when it comes to sexual abuse mm. they say that some of them is because they don't dress well and some of them because they probably expose their body now this is not just about children also about yeah. adults they yes. say they wear provocative dresses and that's what um that's what brings about sexual abuse what do you have to say about that well i feel i feel the society has we really tried to make so many justifications for these sexual abuse perpetrators that it needs to stop because mm-hmm. in relation to the way they dress i mean take india for example their ladies wear almost like yes, they cover up, and then right? india is a country that is popularly known for mm-hmm. raining during the day yes at night, anytime they, just rape they even use it as punishment yeah like times. rape yeah. is just anyhow so for people to say oh the girl wanted because of how she dressed or something i just feel it's absolutely wrong it's absolutely mm-hmm. wrong to just say um you know this girl wanted it so long as she didn't i mean you're an adult right. you're able to make your decisions yeah. if and then you could just you know you could be in a sexual relationship with an adult as well yeah. why would you you know stoop so low to, so rape, low to actually yeah. you know rape a child because it's not most of most likely i say they are not thinking of you know the effects this thing can actually have on each other you are basically contributing something really negative to the child's future so it's just something that i don't think there's no justification okay so one more question do you think a um now between couples do you think the husband can actually sexually abuse his wife or can a wife sexually abuse her husband (laughs) well uh i've I've had more than enough cases to actually know that that exists there's something such as rape in a marriage Wow. Well, the law is still working on, you know, enforcing it, but definitely there is. There is. There okay. Is so, like, in what instance? Well, uh, you know, okay, take for example, my own example, I'm just saying, not me personally. Okay. <laughs> I mean, take for example, a husband who is violent. Okay. You know, maybe he's a drunkard, maybe he just gets really physical with mm-hmm. his wife. Now, you wouldn't beat your wife, turn her to punch him back, and then expect to sleep with her yeah. at night and and just think she would you know willingly Indeed. so let's say she's not seen a bruise that you've given her maybe a swollen cheek swollen whatever and then she's not physically in the mood, in the mood yeah. and then you try to make advances on to and then she says no you know such an husband could actually get violent yeah and, you know actually yes yeah, sure, sure. okay thank you very much for that so um what do you think about this mommy and daddy game that children usually play you know a lot of times you just see it as games mm-hmm. or you see it as you just want to enjoy yourself enjoy the well and all that you just want to act drama mm-hmm. uh-huh, in that sense so what do you think about it do you think it has a leading path to sexual abuse or do you think it's just it doesn't really matter or anything let me, let me hear your view all right well uh, i have a couple of friends who had you know maybe their very first sexual activity through this mommy wow. and I actually have, okay. I, I actually didn't I didn't have someone who I did that with wow. but I have a couple of friends who so parents are just you know guardians they're actually meant to be on the lookout because a kid or two kids you know they're playing mommy and daddy and know mm. and then they are they are young you know they want to experiment and when they see things they just feel okay oh what does this do how can we yeah. do this? and they watch movies and in this age and time right, it's true, really true it's really hard you can't to, close your eyes i mean mm. even if i mean some parents go through extreme measures to you know just limit the number of channels they, they show on watch, cable yeah. but still i mean this is something you see almost everywhere R- so right. you should just as a parent you should make it a point of duty to just ensure that your child and another child is not getting you know way to there's this Close, video that yeah. was trending around. I don't know if you saw it. Was it the one of two kids? Yes, checking a child from. Oh, two little kids. They were once, they yes, having sex. sex. Yeah. Like it was just. Yeah. And they I would, couldn't believe. They would not be up to six. No, they can't, they can't, they can't, be, can't up be up to six. six. And they were legit having sex. Now that 
kind of thing like where are the guys even the person videoing i don't know i just i just felt like the person video like, have been and was it cctv or like like why would you it was if it, it sounded so it looked so odd to me because like wow yeah. a lot of these things happen and even adults just stay there and watch these things happen yeah I mean, thank just, you for thank you for touching that and i think that parents have a part to play in educating their children mm -hmm. about sex educating their children about sex education if you see mommy and daddy doing something you're not like this is not your time to do it maybe when you grow up you do it. all those kind of things i, I think feel, it I teaches feel, them we should live in a in like in an age where adults are being parents they find it easy to just to talk to their to children about, about this thing sex. you know yeah. it's not be something that you you feel like oh, oh mommy like, yeah like, meanwhile you your child is already on don't go yes <laughs> they already like, know all these things mean things, <laughs> things. Yeah, that's the truth so it's not something you should shy away from yeah. for a very little age it's something you should implement in your child and yeah. let, your child let them know about it this is wrong some adults actually have you know Yes, preferences yes. you know pedophiles and all just let and and to add that it should not be too over over protective because yeah. like a lot of times when you make it too over, over protective you make them want to even try they're yeah, like what's yeah. this thing you're stopping me from this no sit them down and make yeah. them understand make that them we are understand. stopping you from doing this because of this and mm -hmm. this and trust me like it has tremendous effect on them mm -hmm. thank you so much yeah. um the next question for you is that what is the saddest story on sexual abuse that you have ever heard? Like, what's the most freaking story that I've heard that made you say, I'm not going to drop advocating for this? Well, uh, I don't actually, I don't think I have one story that I feel like is the saddest okay. of all. But I've heard a couple of, you know, really sad stories that have happened to, you know, my friends, that have happened to on the news mm -hmm. that you read. But, um, do you want me to share, like, yes, maybe sure, some? Yes, okay, uh, well i heard the story of okay i heard the story of a young lady who attends this campus actually just it of a young lady who um she couldn't go back home okay. every break every semester break she okay. stays back on campus she stays with one relative mm -hmm. also just because of the fear that her dad her dad who i guess is a biological father okay. based on how she put it has been sexually abusing her since she was very little and right now she's in university and he still does that wow. so which means every single time she's on semester break and, and goes back home she, she, she knows abused. she's wow. getting abused now she has to stay back because of the fear because she hasn't developed you know that courage, strength or wow. that courage to actually stand up to him and the sad part is her mom knows about it as well but it's more or less like her mom too is you know like helpless yeah to help her. Wow. that was like really really sad because you think you know semester break everybody's everybody rushing to yeah, to family, family, but happy. then you just stay back no, then, wow. without money nothing you just stay back just because you know, like, okay so for that kind of person what would be your what would be your advice to such person well uh i feel in every um family maybe maybe i don't know i just want to give you know the benefit of the doubt in every family there should be one person it doesn't have to be maybe your mom your dad it could just be one uncle or one auntie or make it could even be an institution or an organization mm -hmm. that you find that you know which is really established and if you you know you speak up speak up about this thing you tell the person okay this is what i'm going through and um i really need help because i can't continue to live like this and mm -hmm. such intervention might actually um help, help yeah. you know such that you're able to get the courage, courage to actually because you're an, yeah. like in this case now she's an adult now so she actually has the courage she should get the courage, the courage i mean yeah. to speak up and just you know put an end to to, to it so that okay. she can live her life okay so i want you to talk to people out there who are probably timid about who to talk to talking about people who have probably told so many people about it and they keep hurting them like you tell someone about a sexual abuse mm -hmm. that you have gone through mm -hmm. and that person abuses you mm -hmm. you go on to tell another person and that person mm -hmm. abuses you like it has happened to so many people like that and then they tend not to trust people anymore what yeah. do you have to say to them well uh that's really really sad really but we thank god for you know this work generation where we have a lot of organizations who right, are true. coming up you know mm -hmm. who you can reach out to who you can just tell your stories to and let them you know see how bad this thing is mm -hmm. and why they really need to you know help you and that's actually the goal with loudest foundation i mean that's the 
that's the long term picture. Wow, we just want okay. to be able to provide Help such people. services mm-hmm. like in the practical Same. aspect. You know, right now what we're just doing basically is just the theoretical mm-hmm. aspect. But then the practical aspect is going to, you know, help people like Intimately. actually have the services mm-hmm. to actually, you know, guide someone through okay. that sexual yeah. abuse phase or just save someone. Through. Okay, so before we go to the next question, I want you to tell them how they can volunteer with for people who are want them um, they they have the urge to like volunteer with the as uh, um, the foundation okay. can you tell them how they can reach you and also for people who want to say they are story they just want to talk to somebody right. is there any way they can actually reach the well, foundation okay to join ladisa foundation right now it's very very simple all you just need to do is um get my contact or just through anybody on the team and then we just you know you just become an active member and then you not passive member because we are really looking <laughs> yeah. for active members who are going to you know actually take this thing as something personal to them just to thank implement you. that change that we all want so. thank you thank you very much so do you have a, an instagram handle or yes we do something keep this? yeah our instagram handle is just loud whispers foundation no space no, no yeah that's stuff. simple loud whispers loud foundation. foundation yeah just get it yeah. so i want to ask like what pushed you to having this foundation what pushed you to doing oh. things like because the thing about volunteering many times is that um you do these things based on your own strength your own time mm-hmm. your own money your own resources mm-hmm. so to do something like that means that you must have, you must have put it to thought mm. that oh this thing this is what i'm going to do you have counted the cost and all. what pushed you to having to do this for the society what pushed you to have this so much um strength for mm. sexual abuse advocating against sexual abuse all right well at first i want to i want to uh, you know acknowledge this team doing something for the society yes actually it is doing something for the society but for me personally that wasn't the idea that okay let me do something for the society it was more or less like now i have a sexual abuse story i realize a lot of people have had sexual abuse stories and i just feel i've always felt though that if i'm going to start now this past foundation mm. there's going to be much later in the future say okay. when i'm working when, when i can actually enough, establish yeah, yeah. but then uh you know just a little not here and there just a little you know inspirations yeah. i have people around me who are like very wonderful who just made me feel that this is something i could actually start, start now right mm. now and just you know there's a bigger picture i should just keep working on it yeah. and then so i just decided to you know start something that i feel appeals to a lot of people mm-hmm. then when we started i actually had to speak to certain persons to hear their opinions about it that's when i got to realize that oh so this thing that mm-hmm. is deep is actually yes, deep big, to you yes. as well male and female i have a couple of friends who were mm-hmm. very okay. receptive so. okay so now like right from the beginning we've heard that um helping the society is not it's not just really about helping the society but doing something worthwhile mm-hmm. doing something that people really need meeting a need in the society i've also heard that boys get sexually abused also the same way as girls do there are a lot of painful stories out there and you just need to help someone if you can and you can join the foundation to help people even more and share your story if you think you can or if you think you have to and if you need to talk to talk to someone you can also meet them also and they'll, they'll be there to provide help to you so now there's a personal section of this interview so we have a time to ask you a personal question okay. so we'll be asking you what is what is your most embarrassing moment <laughs> my most embarrassing moment <laughs> oh Oh god. <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay, uh, all right. Let me just say it's not that big age. It's big age. Okay, I was in secondary school and um I was on my period. Like I started my period in class. So, you know, then I was still getting the old angle, you know, being able to handle your yeah. your menstrual cycle and all. But then it started while I was in class. So and there was this guy who I kind of had a crush on. We were talking, but then he slept off. So it was like, <laughs> so I was sitting right here, like in front of him. My chair was like back to okay. him. Then his head was like this on the desk. So we we're just conversing. But then he slept off. So as he slept off me, I was still sitting there now. I didn't know that, you know. I was <laughs> looking and all. So by the time I now stood up, I stood up. I still didn't know. Meanwhile, the I'll be the chair because it's a white plastic chair. Was Jeez. ready like, red. So I just stood up. So I just stood up and then I went out of the class. Okay. So while I was even out of the class, I think I was still gisting with my friend. Only for one of my friends to now see the back of my skirt. I was like, Ife, 
like you are so by the time I turned because the stain was like really really bad. Wow. And, if, and I asked the friend, oh my god, oh it's not as if I've been stained since. So the friend walked into the class, then saw the chair, the chair with the red whatever wow. in distance, and then my crush was still sleeping like this. Ah. I don't know if he woke up at any point to see the whatever, but like I wasn't myself like wow. after. Oh. But like weeks <laughs> after, I wasn't myself. That's anymore. one. Thank you so much, Ife, for coming to enlighten us. Yeah. It's been such a wonderful moment with mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. and I hope that everyone out there has learned one thing or the other and has seen it as a responsibility to actually do something to solve a problem or to meet a need so at this point to say a very big thank you mm. and i don't know if you'd like to share your contacts with them so they can reach you well yeah my okay. whatsapp contact um zero nine zero five one one six five eight four one zero nine zero five one one Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and you'll be meeting us again next time. Thank you. Bye.